Meiha we nehiken, netwanyane Virginia Carmelo, ekwaneha aweshko, mei shaho venachre, eyo towanga ko eyo hunut betam. Greetings, all my relatives. My name is Virginia Carmelo. I'm honored to be here as we acknowledge our land and our ancestors. Their presence here as the original inhabitants, heirs, and caretakers of our traditional ancestral tribal lands has been since time immemorial. Importantly and historically, these lands have never been ceded. I'd like to acknowledge my respected Tongva elders, Mr. Edgar Perez and Mr. Jimmy Castillo, who are here tonight. And I acknowledge, thank you. They've done a lot of work in the community. And I acknowledge and welcome all elders this evening, and a special welcome back to Miss Shashin Littlefeather. In historical times, we were given several names and descriptions, the long arms, the diggers, Gravelileño, Keith, Fernandeño, Shoshone, and more. Today, more commonly, we call ourselves Tongva. My ancestors before me would have pronounced it Tongbe. It conveys the meaning of people of the earth. In 1994, this golden state recognized the Gabrielino Tongva Nation as the original inhabitants of the Los Angeles Basin. Still, we are among over 100 tribes in California without the status of federal recognition. Our Tongva ancestors thrived in a rich and dynamic maritime culture with a network of nearly 100 known villages and a clan and economic trading system that interacted with all Southern California and beyond. They maintained an ongoing relationship and knowledge of this beautiful and rich land and its Mediterranean climate. They established and traveled all the connected paths from the mountains to the sea. One of these well-worn paths, not far from here, leading to the ocean, is now called Sunset Boulevard. Allow me to give you an accurate description of Tovangar, our Tongva tribal ancestral lands. It covers the entire Los Angeles Basin and four southern channel islands. We identify this today as the greater part of Los Angeles and Orange counties and parts of Riverside and San Bernardino counties. Our lands were defined by natural geographical borders and are well documented. In the north, we are bordered by what we call the Santa Susana Mountains. The entire San Fernando Valley was home to many of our Tongva villages, such as Tohunga, Kawinga, and Pakoinga. You may recognize these as Tahanga, Kawenga, and Pakoima. Towards the east, we have the San Gabriel Mountains we call Haha'i Yuat, the Snowy Mountains. Some villages you may recognize there are Haramukna, Kukamonga, all the way to Hurunga. These today we call Red Box, Kukamonga, and Yerupa. To the south, we have natural features and boundaries of today's San Joaquin Hills, Santiago Canyon, and to Aliso Creek. I come to you today from Hutukna, which you call Anaheim. In the west, we have coastal village, villages, and one is to Topanga, which you call Topanga. We have our four beautiful islands, the largest we call Pimu, and you know it today as Catalina Island. We are proud that Tovangar is and has always been a flourishing center of abundance influence, and creativity. Greater Los Angeles is now home to almost a quarter of a million Native Americans, representing some 200 tribes. On behalf of my ancestors, I welcome you all as we gather for this historical evening. Thank you, and may it be well.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you, Virginia, for your leadership, your guidance, and partnership in leading that beautiful blessing. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jacqueline Stewart, director and president of the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. It is, thanks. It's such an honor to be with all of you tonight. We are so thrilled to welcome you to this evening to honor and to reflect with our guest of honor, Sasheen Littlefeather. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to my co MC for the evening. Please welcome Earl McConey. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, again, it's a privilege and an honor to be here. And we know this is the night for Sasheen. And I've known Sasheen, my wife and I, going back to the 90s. And I was a dancer, uh, an MC, arena director, and did I say singer? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I danced every chance I could with Sasha's late husband, Charles Koshaway. If there was a gourd dance and I was there, he was there right next to me dancing. And Sash would be sitting right next to my wife. So again, it's an honor to be here tonight. And we also welcome the other Native Americans in the, the room. Back when I was growing up, they were Indians. You didn't have to be political. Um, correct in any way, you're Indians. So that's okay that we grew up being called that and calling each other that. But we recognize tonight the Tongva, the Kiowa, Choctaw, Ojibwe, Kickapoo, Northern Cheyenne, the Osage, Pitt River, Southern Cheyenne, the Sistan, Wapitan, Oyate, Sistan, Diné, the Navajo, Suquamish, Cheyenne, Mescalero Apache, Diné, or the Navajo, Suquamish, Navajo, Luceno, we have uh, Pachanga in the house. White Mountain Apache and the Apache and Yaqui tribes, all here for Sasheen Littlefeather. And again. <laughs> this is Sasha's night, so we are good. Um, thank you, Earl. It really is a beautiful experience bringing so many people together on stage and in the audience. As most of you know, Sasheen Littlefeather became a household name in 1973, almost 50 years ago. During that year's Academy Award ceremony, Sasheen, a member of the Screen Actors Guild, became the first Native American woman to stand on stage at the Oscars. At the request of Marlon Brando, Sasheen politely declined Brando's Best Actor Award for The Godfather and gave a passionate 60 second speech regarding the stereotypes of Native Americans and indigenous people in the entertainment industry. I got my cards mixed up. <laughs> well, we'd like to welcome you right now to a uh, honoring song and Huh, kidding. 
That's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Well, Sessing's speech in 1973 was a shining light for all Native Americans. And I was a sophomore in high school, and when I saw this, I was like, you know what, that's, she's one of us. She's on that stage representing me representing you, and you, and you. As a 15-year-old kid, that's something you've never seen before, especially as a, a Native American. So it, uh, it opened our eyes, it opened our hearts, and it invented an Indian identity for a lot of us. So with that, thank you, Sash. I hope Thank you. On that night, Sashin also brought attention to the 1973 Wounded Knee protest in South Dakota. This moment resulted in Sashin being professionally boycotted, personally attacked and harassed and discriminated against for the last 50 years. As most of you know, the Academy issued a long overdue apology to Sashin this past summer. More on that a little later. In one of our many conversations with Sashin in preparation for this event, we asked, what does reconciliation look like to you? And that single powerful question has led us to this evening. Tonight is her vision of what the path forward might look like that we can all share space to celebrate Native American and indigenous cultures, to reflect, to collectively support one another in this circle of healing for those here on stage, for those of you in the audience, and for those viewing at home. Now the honoring. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, now the honoring, hey. <laughs> Uh, again, we'd like you to participate in this uh, honoring song, so if you're able to please stand. If you're not, that's okay too. So these honoring songs are decades old, centuries old, and the honoring song is the greatest honor that we can give a person, a family, uh, an organization. And whether it's a returning warrior from way back when or a returning veteran from war uh, and the family are given these, these types of songs. And we sing this to Sashin as well to bring honor and healing. So again, this honor song, Steve Bohe, the Sooner Nation singers, with Cameron Persaud, Michael Ballinger, and the All Nation Singers, with Michael Andrews, Manny Liras. All right, here we go.
right, thank, thank you. At this time, I'd like to welcome the dancers for this intertribal. First, we have women's northern traditional buckskin, Teresa Littleberg, Northern Cheyenne from California. And grass dancer, Wesley Ballinger, Ojibwe, Minnesota, and Kickapoo, Oklahoma. And southern straight men's traditional dancer, James Gregory, Osage, Oklahoma. And carrying our Eagle Staff, grass dancer Randy Pico Jr., Navajo and Luceno Pachanga. Next we have our Southern Women's Cloth, Michelle Gregory, Pitt River, Northern California. Jingle gra I'm sorry, jingle dress dancer, Sophia Seaboy. Sisseton, Wapitan, Oyate, Sisseton, South Dakota. All right, and our chicken dancer, Ashki, where you at? All right. He's got a lot, a lot of last, last name here. He's Dene Navajo. And Kidin Nihi, is that correct? Gosh. See, after 20 years, I get it right. I finally get it right. <laughs> All right, so next we have a, a very special song with these dancers. So turning it back over to Steve Bohe, Sooner Nation. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on. Bring this down.
he's back. <laughs> Actually, I'm waiting for my uh, parking to get validated, so. <laughs> you know, I wanted to be a uh, bingo caller, not this. I don't know. All right, so next we have a very special song that would be sung by Suquamish Songbird from the state of Washington, Kalina Lawrence, Suquamish, Washington. Thank y'all so much. Hatzlachel, CEO of the Ishad, Kalina Lawrence, Seedstat. Good day, my name is Kalina Lawrence, and I have the beautiful, beautiful honor of sharing some original music tonight, two of Auntie's favorite songs, and I'm going to need your help. You gonna help me out? So the first song is called Don't Count Me Out. And the second song is Us Halit Ti Tul Shoot Seed, which is a call and response. So when you hear me say Us Khaid Chalup, how are you folks in Southern Tul Shoot Seed? You're gonna say, We love you, Sashin. Is that true? Yeah. You love Sashin? So when you hear me get to that part of the song, the chorus, Us Khaid Chalup, we love you, Sashin. All right, it goes like this. Shout out to Desiree Harp. Shout out to hip hop, to our black and Afro indigenous loved ones, to all of you, to our foster youth. Don't count us out. Release my heart from grief and negligence. I guess I handle pain with elegance. But I'm screaming, when is enough enough? This can't be it, I'm losing grip, I'm giving up. Back in the day, this world took my innocence. It's like trauma means the same as indigenous. Historical, current and the in-between from age three all the way to age 18. Ward of the court without a soul to trust. Whole families lost and forced to readjust. Now 29, yes, my knees buckle. We must alleviate these red struggles. Addiction, poor health, jail, and suicide. These things are killing our people nationwide. Addiction, poor health, jail, and suicide. These things are killing our people genocide. No more survivors trying to thrive. If it's death alive. Thank you, folks. I love you, Auntie. Come on, Kalina Lawrence. That was, that was incredible. <laughs> and 
I want to offer special thanks to you, Kalina, because in addition to gracing us with this beautiful performance that you just shared, you've been a fundamental part of making this evening possible. We have felt the deep love and respect that you and Sashin have for one another in all of our conversations, and we're incredibly grateful for all that you do. So please, another round of applause for Kalina Lawrence. Mm. The next portion of our program tonight will be devoted to time and space for conversation. I'm always happy to introduce our next guest. In addition to being my predecessor as director and president of the museum, he's a staunch advocate for directly engaging with Hollywood's histories, both celebratory and complex. Without him and his vision for what this museum could be, the stories it could tell, we would not be here tonight. So please join me in welcoming the CEO of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Mr. Bill Kramer. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you, Jacqueline, for, and all, everyone who appeared on stage tonight. We are truly honored by your generosity in being here and sharing in this moment with us. We are building towards a future that is collaborative, collective, and community-centered across the Academy. And our mission, both at the museum and at the Academy, is underpinned by a prioritization of representation, belonging, inclusion, and access. We are so deeply grateful to all of you tonight. You inspire us to continue our ongoing work to create meaningful change at the Academy and throughout the film industry. What you are now about to see is the powerful clip of Sashin so bravely standing on the Oscars stage to decline the Academy Award. You can also see this footage in our Academy Awards history gallery here at the museum. When we opened the museum, we grounded it in a focus on reflecting on our own past. This, is, this evening is an evolution of that work, and it really all started with this clip in our Academy Awards History Gallery. Please enjoy. The winner is Marlon Brando in The Godfather. Accepting the award for Marlon Brando and The Godfather, Miss Shashin Littlefeather. Hello, my name is Sashin Littlefeather. I'm Apache, and I'm president of the National Native American Affirmative Image Committee. I'm representing Marlon Brando this evening, and he has asked me to tell you in a very long speech, which I cannot share with you presently because of time, but I will be glad to share with the press afterwards that he very regretfully cannot accept this very generous award. And the reasons for this being are the treatment of American Indians today by the film industry. Excuse me. And on television, in movie reruns, and also with recent happenings at Wounded Knee. I beg at this time that I have not intruded upon this evening and that we will, in the future, our hearts and our understandings will meet with love and generosity. Thank you on behalf of Marlon Brando.
to discuss that historic moment and its ripple effect, I'd like to invite two very special people to the stage. The first guest has been essential in catalyzing the relationship between Sasheen and the museum. Please welcome Academy member, producer, and co-chair of the Academy's Indigenous Alliance, Bird Running Water. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. I am honored and humbled and overjoyed to introduce the Academy Museum stage, Sasheen Littlefeather. Well, I made it after <laughs> you 50 made it. years. <laughs> You're here. We're all here, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I just wanted to um, just first of all give a welcome um, in Apache. And to you too. Thank you for being here. We are so grateful for you and for everything that you stand for from going back almost 50 years ago to today. And we're just honored to be able to have this moment with you. Good. You know how we Indian people are. Yeah. We are very patient people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, I know that, you know, I think a lot of people, we just saw the clip, you know, going back to 1973 and, and, uh, and the words that you spoke and, you know, and I think the intentions that Marlon Brando had as well. But can you just kind of maybe put us back into 1973 for those of us that maybe were still in diapers or, you know, um, were doing other things instead of watching the Oscars. But tell us what was going on and, and, and what was happening in 1973 that was all led up to this confluence of you being on the Oscar stage. Well, first of all, back then I wore a size 10. <laughs> And way back then, uh, Marlon Brando, who was a friend of mine, asked me to refuse the Academy Award for him. And we were in collaboration at that time because he was very aware of the stereotype of Native American Indians in film, television, and the sports industry. And so was I. And so he wrote an about a six or seven page speech. And he asked me to deliver this to the Oscars in 1973 on his behalf. And so I agreed. And uh, he said, did I have anything to wear? And I said, well, I usually just wear jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> and he said, well, you can't wear that. So I said, well, I have a northern buckskin dress to Powell's. And he said, well, that's good. Wear that. So in a way, he chose my wardrobe for me. <laughs> and so uh, that Oscar ceremony was due to be 
through by nine o'clock that night. But you know, Marlon Brando time is Indian time all to hell. <laughs> and uh, so by the time he finished that speech, it was about, oh, maybe quarter after eight. He just took his sweet loving time. And so I patiently waited at his home. And his secretary and I, we finally got that speech. And I guess we took off for the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion that Monday evening. And we finally arrived. It was about 20 minutes to, to 9 o'clock. And here the security guards found this couple, myself in a buckskin dress, and his secretary dressed in an evening gown. We must have looked like the odd couple. <laughs> and I'm sure they were wondering, why are we dressed like that? And why are we here? So, the guards consulted the head executive producer of the Academy Awards, Howard Koch. And so he came up and he talked to us. And his secretary, Alice, had the official invitation for Marlon Brando. So he said, OK. And he told me right then, if you read that speech and you go over 60 seconds, I will have you put in handcuffs. You see those police over there? I will have you arrested, put in jail. And he said, you have 60 seconds or less to represent Marlon. I said, OK. And I had made this promise to Marlon not to touch that Oscar. And so you see, I wasn't under any pressure that night. <laughs> I knew that the Creator was with me. I had prayed to my ancestors to be with me that night. And it was with prayer that I went up there. I went up there like a proud Indian woman, with dignity, with courage, with grace, and with humility. And as I began to walk up those steps, I knew that I had to speak the truth. Some people may accept it, and some people may not. But as I walked up those stairs, I knew that people would either be receptive or not. But I had to refuse that Oscar, and I held my hand like this. And I did not touch that statuesque. And what happened was that I kept my promise to Marlon. And then as I got in front of the podium, and there was one of my favorite actresses there one night, Lee Volman. And I said, oh, no. <laughs> Roger Moore, 007. <laughs> but Leif Ullman, who is the wife of Ingmar Bergman, my favorite director. Oh. So anyway, I got up to the podium, and I refused the Oscar on behalf of Marlon, and I kept it all under 60 seconds. Yeah. Incredible.
That was my second promise I kept. But there was some commotion behind the stage. And I didn't find out what that was all about. But it was Big John Wayne getting ready to assault me. And he had to be held back by six security men to prevent him from doing so. Now that was the most violent act that ever took place at the Academy Awards. When I left that stage, I heard some comments from the people back there. And it was, and the tomahawk chop. And I just kept walking in dignity to the four different press rooms that I went to. And then after that, I held my head high and I left with a car that was waiting for me. And that was Marlon's nephew and a friend of his who had come over to play guitar that afternoon who were in a pair of shorts and a, a t-shirt and the guitar is in the back of the seat. <laughs> you made it out. I made it out, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I think that, you know, of course we look at you standing on the stage and giving actually probably one of the first political speeches ever given on the stage. And, um, and I think that we can, we can kind of think of you as being somebody, yes. I think somebody who represents a sense of justice, you know, and if, if as you look back on your life, would you, would you consider that to be a, an appropriate label of somebody standing for, for justice? Yes, because I didn't represent myself. I was representing all indigenous voices out there, all indigenous people because we have never been heard in that way before. And if I had to pay the price of admission, then that was okay, because those doors had to be open, like Yosemite Sam. <laughs> Somebody had to do it. And it was okay. And uh, I had to pay the price, so that was all right, too. Well, I think those of us who are involved in today's industry are definitely grateful to you. You know, I think some of us, yeah. I mean, I think you, you were trying to stand for change, you know, 50 years ago and, you know, flash forward. I think there's, there's a renewed generation, I think, who are also kind of doing the same, same creatively. Um, now we have TV shows, you know, on the air. We have films and playing and movie houses and, and online. And I just wondered what you, if you have any thoughts about any of that. Oh, yeah. I'm very grateful to you, Bird. For the last 20 years, you have worked so diligently to bring Native filmmakers, writers, and actors from the Native American point of view to the forefront. And you created the American Indian Film Institute with Robert Redford in the Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah. You created that. And for 20 years, you worked diligently hard to make that happen. And now you've been here in LA and now on the board of directors of the Museum's American, uh, the, uh, the Academy Award board of uh, motion pictures and sciences. And I'm very grateful for this. Thank you very much.
Well, I've, I've always just most often considered myself to be a facilitator because the talent is there. The talent is in our community. The talent is here in town. And it's always been, I guess, my great pleasure and goal to really kind of provide a pathway like, like those of you who laid down the path before us, you know, for me to kind of continue constructing the path in a new and a very different way in an industry, I think, to essentially perforate, you know, that, that barrier of invisibility and misrepresentation and all of those things. Well, as we close, why don't, what, can you tell us, um, give us a little bit of your thoughts on, on this, the performances and the singing and everything that's happening tonight? Because I know you handpicked everybody who's coming on stage tonight to share their culture, but give us a little bit <laughs> about your thoughts about them. Well, I'm really proud of each and every one of them who's here tonight, and I hope that everyone enjoys them. I knew some of them, and I knew their parents and their grandparents, and I grew up with some of them when they're little tiny tots. After all, I'm an elder now. I'm 75 years old. And Yeah, I'll tell you, gilding old is not for sissies, that's one thing. <laughs> and I'm never doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> but these performers are great, and I've known them most of my life. And uh, I'm crossing over soon to the spirit world. And you know, I'm not afraid to die. That's one thing, I'm not afraid to die because uh, we come from a we, us, and our society. We don't come from a me, I, myself society. And we learn to give away from a very young age with our giveaways. When we are honored, we give. So I started giving away already. Last week, I gave away my automobile. What? <laughs> yeah. So I have no car. <laughs> I don't even have a horse. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty soon, before I leave, I'll have nothing. Yeah. yeah. Not even this body that I live in, you know? Because it's all going to the spirit world. I will be all my ancestors there, mm -hmm. including my late husband, Charles Koshaway, Yeah. which I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. yeah. Well, in the spirit of, of giving away, I know that you had some gifts that you wanted to present um, to, yes, some, I do. to some folks, and I think they're supposed to magically appear <laughs> at some point. Um, Yes, here we are. Um, so Sashin wanted to call forth a few people um, in the tradition of, of giving away to, you know, honored ones. Um, and I think the first person is going to be Earl. Earl Nakoni, our MC for tonight. Can I put the shawl in the lap for a second? Yeah. I'm going to put the bowl over there now. Okay. You've got a big yeah. neck, Earl. <laughs> better than a big head. <laughs> he said it's better than a big head. <laughs> Mike Ballinger. Uh, should, uh, Sasha would like to call forward Mike Ballinger. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I've known him since he was a little guy. <laughs> and Steve Bohe. Steve Bohe. And Steve Moen? Steve Bohe. Mohan, sorry. 
Come forward, please. so much. Oh. Oh. And Sashin is calling for Joe Tahoni, please. Sashin is calling for Jacqueline Stewart, please. Oh, it goes with your dress. Thank you for that. And I know that you'll be sharing other gifts later on upstairs with some more special guests, but we wanted to make sure we called out those people for you. And many of them are the, are the singers, um, the, the culture keepers, the people who are sharing their gifts with us tonight in Sashin's honor. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And I appreciate each and every one of you in this audience tonight. Sashin Bird, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Sashin, understanding the many ways in which your voice has been silenced as a result of the 1973 Academy Awards is a painful reckoning. We are so thankful to you for opening your heart to be here with us tonight. It is so meaningful to hear your reflections, to receive your gifts of humility and eloquence and love the same gifts you offered up with astounding courage almost 50 years ago on the Oscar stage. To join us all on stage, I'd like to invite former Academy President and Casting Director David Rubin and current Academy President and Producer Janet Yang. Thank you, Jacqueline. In the most positive sense, the Academy and our industry finds itself at an inflection point. And thanks to this wonderful museum and to events like this, we are actively examining our past and focusing on how best we can facilitate healing going forward. Ms. Littlefeather, we are pleased and moved that you have so graciously received our letter which, signed by me as chair of, then chair of our Board of Governors, also reflects the input and wisdom of Bird Running Water, Heather Ray, the Academy's Indigenous Alliance, and the Academy staff, particularly Janelle English, our Executive Vice President of Impact and Inclusion. I will read that letter now. June 18th, 2022. Dear Sashin Littlefeather, I write to you today a letter that has been a long time coming, 
on behalf of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, with humble acknowledgement of your experience at the 45th Academy Awards. As you stood on the Oscar stage in 1973 to not accept the Oscar on behalf of Marlon Brando, in recognition of the misrepresentation and mistreatment of Native American people in the, by the film industry, you made a powerful statement that continues to remind us of the necessity of respect and the importance of human dignity. The abuse you endured because of this statement was unwarranted and unjustified. The emotional burden you've lived through and the cost to your own career in our industry, irreparable. For too long, the courage you showed has been unacknowledged. For this, we offer both our deepest apologies and our sincere admiration. We cannot realize the Academy's mission to inspire imagination and connect the world through cinema without a commitment to facilitating the broadest representation and inclusion, reflective of our diverse global population. Today, nearly 50 years later, and with the guidance of the Academy's Indigenous Alliance, we are firm in our commitment to ensuring Indigenous voices, the original storytellers, are visible, respected contributors to the global film community. We are dedicated to fostering a more inclusive, respectful industry that leverages a balance of art and activism to be a driving force for progress. We hope you receive this letter in the spirit of reconciliation and as recognition of your essential role in our journey as an organization. You are forever respectfully ingrained in our history. With warmest regards, David Rubin, President of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Ms. Littlefeather, again, thank you. Thank you for your strength then and your strength now. I would now like to introduce my colleague, friend, and successor who will continue to guide our organization and the industry with inclusion and as a guiding principle and priority. President of the Academy, Janet Yang. Thank you so much. I'm going off script now because I am just so truly and deeply moved by this room of beautiful faces, by this community, by this evening of healing, and most of all, by Sashin Littlefeather. Rewatching that clip was painful. And I'm sorry for what you've had to endure. And let's hope we do not ever have such a moment of disrespect again. Uh, in accepting this post as president of the Academy, it was essential to me that the Academy continue our growth, evolution, and influence centered around broader representation, inclusion, access, and respect. Sashin Littlefeather, your journey is a personal and profound reminder as to why. The Academy remains committed to progress with humble acknowledgement that there is much to do. It is through moments like today, which has received overwhelming support, I mean, look at all of you, <laughs> that we are able to learn, evolve, and build knowing that this work will always be an ongoing process. Our support, celebration, and recognition of Native American and indigenous communities and storytellers do not end today. Through initiatives like the launch of the Academy's Indigenous Alliance, led by members Bird Running Water and Ainsley Gardner, our talent development programs and community partnerships we are building a future of film that is collaborative, conversational, and solutions-oriented. Representation without inclusion or access is not enough. I am so honored to be, with here, to be here with you today and look forward to our future, one which we have greatly inspired. Ms. Littlefeather, I heard that your favorite color was purple, hence the what I'm wearing. Purple. I would like to also reiterate our apology and our gratitude towards you. Thank you. Thank you. And we 
response to that apology, I want to say in 1973, I was a 26-year-old indigenous woman, a member of the Screen Actors Guild. Very few people of color were finding their way through an impractical society that deliberately set out to erase the existence and diversity of Native peoples. Through genocide, oppression, and the unwavering efforts for Indian self-determination, our generation re remained hard at work. And we were not the only ones. In 1973, I fulfilled the request of a friend and ally. Marlon Brando asked that I attend the ceremony in his place and refused the Oscar for Best Actor for the role in The Godfather. And so I did. I knew the impact and the importance of representing all Native people on that night. It was critical for the psyche of all our relations to bring awareness to and interrupt the negative interpretation and representation of Native American people by the film, television, and sports industries Marlon and I knew it urgent to highlight the 1973 American Indian Movement AIM, Occupation of Wounded Knee, South Dakota. They were experiencing a media blackout. Supposedly, Wounded Knee, South Dakota was a site where a US missile base was going to be built. I, more than anyone, know the impact of what 60 seconds at the Academy Award can mean then and now, 50 years later. I have developed a strong sense of self, community, and a good sense of humor. <laughs> Laughter is good medicine. I come from an ancestral matrilineal society where women are leaders, role models, and teachers of peace, love, harmony, humility, humanity, truth, conversation, and a coming together in our sacred circle of unity. Other may, others may choose to follow in our ways. I am here accepting this apology, not only for me alone, but as the acknowledgement, knowing that it was not only for me, but for all of our nations that also need to hear and deserve this apology tonight. Now I would like all the Indian people in this audience to stand. Look at you all. Look at our people. Look at each other and be proud that we stand as survivors, all of us. Please. When I am gone, always be reminded that whenever you stand for your truth, 
you will be keeping my voice and the voices of our nations and our people alive. I remain Sashin Littlefeather. Thank you, and thank you for coming tonight. We want to give you a blanket. Oh my gosh. Oh, thank you so much. This is to honor you for everything you have stood for and for always being here for us. Thank you. How did you know I was getting cold? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. I could take my purse. Yes. I don't make that offer to everyone. <laughs> you love me, Sasha! I love you too. <laughs> Hey, take your seats. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> they told me to say that. All right, to close out the evening, we have the final dance, which will be provided by the White Mountain Apache Crown Dancers with Joe Tahani, Jr., a two-time Grammy nominee from the White Mountain Apache Tribe in Arizona. Here we go. Wow, so quiet. <laughs> it's an honor for us to be here. A long drive for someone special. Someone special to my heart. So I'm going to do something really quick. This is what I do before we even start. Oh, hey, you can on, she taught. Di down that is tiny o kahi, be cut only one said to get on chita. Beyond the coast delta go ten will study. Sashin goze, he stop ni o kahi, ni tesli be cut only one said. Is your baho johnson will let it get on chita. Beyond the coast delta go ten will let us stop. Go jolet will let it get on chita. Di down a co that is tiny he a short laco. A prayer for you and a prayer for Shashin. So remember that. 
no matter how big or small your faith is, no matter what, it will get you through anything in life.
比我看也吃些那些呀耶耶耶，哎个啥些个啥些耶，哎耶大伊斯提尼伊哈那乌卡哈拉啊，把我说用我的舌头喂他呢那呀拉呢啊啊，哎呀哎呀嘿。
Hello, take your seats. Hey, <laughs> that's the only line I can remember. In fact, I don't. <laughs> that's the way we honor our people. Not mascots, not mimicking what we do or the way we look on a hat, the side of a helmet. This way, song and dance, Indian people. 50 years to get back here? No. We're here to stay. This was Sasha's night. A shining example of what steadfastness and, and staying on point, standing up for what you believe. Hopefully this is where it'll get you. So Sash, your night, 
Thank you. What a powerful evening. Before we leave, I want to extend my thanks to each of our performers and presenters tonight who appeared on stage with us. I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. It has been an important celebration and a community of healing and reflection. And of course, our thanks to Sashin Littlefeather, whose warrior spirit and generous heart brought us all together tonight. Sashin, you are a true inspiration to us all. For me, this evening emphasizes the vital importance of first-person storytelling, of first-voice representation, and for truth-telling, even if or especially if the truth is not comfortable to hear. Here at the Academy Museum, we are committed to telling stories that expand, challenge, and sometimes dismantle dominant narratives in film history. Sashin, your life's work will undoubtedly inspire current and future filmmakers to use cinema as a means to amplify equity and justice. We are so grateful to you for writing history with the Academy once again tonight and carving a new path forward, one of hope, radical inclusion, and love. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and good evening. <laughs>